In this video, I'm gonna be sharing with you guys some of these budget studio strobes that you guys can pick up on Amazon that will help you get started with studio lighting. So let's find out. How's it going guys? Welcome back to yet another video. My name is Andre, if you don't already know. In this video, I wanna share with you guys some of the budget strobes that I've been using in my studio and some of these budget strobes that can really get you started in studio lighting. So right here, I have the newer N250 watt W strobe. Um, these are actually fairly inexpensive on Amazon. They're quite cheap and they're quite powerful. So what do you get in the box? First, there are a few different types of kits. You can get these in two, which is what I have. You can get them in three, and you can even get them in four. So when you get the kit, first you get this amount of lights. So I got two, which means I got two of these strobes. Alongside these strobes, you get two light stands. You get two soft boxes, newer, beautiful. And along with the soft boxes, you also get two or three umbrellas, depending on the number. You get a little trigger for your camera. These are universal and you can just literally put it on your hot shoe and you are ready to go. And then in order to get these triggered, you need transmitters from the lights. They each come with a little transmitter that is simple plug and play right into the sync port. They're actually very powerful. They start at a power of 10 and these ones go all the way up to 60 and um, they're very, very good for what they do. But for a lot of newbies that are getting started with studio lighting, they don't know some of the basics. Okay, so some of the basics for studio lighting when you're getting strobes like these is that they automatically go based on your camera sync speed. So when I first got these for roughly $200, about two years back, um, I was using a Nikon D3400. With that Nikon, the sync speed was 1 1 80th of a second. If I shot any faster, I would get a black bar across my images. So just for reference, these are some of the images I was able to pull off with these strobes. This is a self-portrait I did on a black background, and this is another self-portrait that I did uh, against a tinfoil background, and I lit it with a blue gel. Because these are so powerful, you need to understand a few things. You can't shoot at a shutter speed faster than one 200th of a second, because again, you'll be getting that black bar, because that's the camera sync speed. So in order to be able to use these and to maintain a proper exposure, shooting at the lowest ISO possible, you probably have to shoot at F8, F9, F10, F11, like I did with the shots that I showed you previously. Another way to really understand these, if you really want uh, to use a shallower depth of field, is the inverse square law when it comes to light. So the further away, the less power uh, and light that you will get on your face. So if I were to move this key light that I have next to my face, if I were to move it double the distance, I would, use, I would lose half the power. However, there are alternative ways of using these strobes with shallower depth of field. Um, the ways that I've been using it lately is I've been treating these as slave flashes when I've been doing my headshot photography. So I actually use a Godox AD200 with a trigger and everything with my Sony a7 III. I did videos on that so you can check it out. Uh, I use that as my main light and then I use these as fill lights, rim lights, hair lights, uh, but because they're still more powerful than my 200, um, I either have them quite far away or I bounce them off the walls, I bounce them off the ceilings to get that same desired effect that I'm looking for without having blown out highlights on people's faces. Uh, for the most part, I still try and use my camera's sync speed and just adjust my settings because I don't have to shoot any portraits at 1.8. Um, that's where high sync speed really comes in handy. But for portraits like these where I'm shooting at f5.6, um, again, bouncing these off the walls through the soft box to lose a stop and then off the walls to lose another stop of light to make these work for you. So for how cheap these are and what you're getting the best bang for the buck, they're actually very, very good for what you get. Um, they come with cables, right? They're not battery, they're not bad. There's no battery packs. Um, but I do recommend you try and learn a little bit about studio lighting before you just hop in and purchase some of these lights. Because when I initially did, I was not happy that I always had to shoot in a complete dark room in a dark basement with manual focus at F11. That was not what I wanted to shoot at the time. I wanted shallower depth of field. Now I'm going away from that, so I'm understanding how to use light a little bit better. So if you're looking at purchasing these, I do have links down in the comments below. I highly recommend them. 
if you're looking at starting a little studio and you're understanding a little bit more about light. Otherwise, you may wanna hold off a little bit on these, but they are a great option to buy. And I highly recommend these for, you know, amateur photographers, people who are just looking at getting into studio photography. So thank you guys for watching. I hope you learned something new in this video. Um, check out my Instagram, check out my website, definitely subscribe to the channel because there's a lot more good content coming um, fairly, fairly soon on the channel and I'm super stoked about it, lots of good stuff. So definitely make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss any of that. Again, thank you for watching and I will catch you guys in the next video. Peace.